What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the All Powers S2000 Portable Power Station. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 1500 watt hour lithium battery, a 2000 watt power handling with a peak of 4000 watts, a 500 watt solar charging input, and weighs 31.96 pounds. All right, so taking a look inside the box, you have your quick start guide along with your warranty information inside this little envelope. Then you have this nice zipper bag here, which is what holds all your cables for the power station. And inside of this, you get your power cable, which kind of like a standard computer power cable. So the power brick is actually built into this. So all you need to do is just plug in one of these. I really like that as I don't have to worry about labeling and having another charging brick for this power station. Beside that, you also have your MC4 to XT60 cable. You have a car adapter to XT60. And then lastly, this power station actually comes with a very nice vinyl cover here. So if you need to go camping or something and store it outside, you can go ahead and cover it up with this case here. Taking a look at the power station itself, the entire unit is just black and gray. There's not too much going on design wise, but overall it's a nice and modern looking power stations. I do like the two handles here on top as they do feel nice and sturdy and make this power station very easy to carry versus a single handle that you'll find on most other power stations. Taking a look at the ports, you have four AC outlets up top, two USB type C, and I love that these are both 100 watt ports. A lot of times these power stations will have two of these ports, but one will be 100 watts and the other one will be like 65 watts or 35 watts. But here you actually get two high powered 100 watt ports. Right above that, you have your DC car output, four USB-A ports, and then lastly over here, you have your XT60 port, which is what you use for solar charging. So as I said earlier, the charger is integrated into this power station. All you need to do is plug in the power cable, and using that connected to the wall, it charged the power station on average at about 360 watts. All right, so a few weeks ago, we threw a party at my house, and one of the things we rented was a bouncy house. I honestly had no idea how much these things draw, but I figured it would be the perfect thing to test the power station capacity with. Surprisingly, these bouncy houses draw a lot more than I thought they would and used about 850 watts on average. Since this power station is rated for 2,000 watts, it had no problem running it and ran it until the battery died out. So draining this power station with the bouncy house, it put out a total of 1,197 watt hours. Doing the math, that gives this unit a usable capacity of 80%. Most power stations are somewhere around 85% and up, so this is a little on the lower side, but overall not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this power station. It's supposed to be able to handle 2,000 watts and I believe a 4,000 watt peak. Uh, my full-time job, I'm an automotive detailer, so here I have a commercial carpet extractor, then I have a commercial steamer. So let me go ahead and plug these in and see what kind of power they're going to draw. Alright, so I just have the heater on the carpet extractor plugged in, and that's pulling 930 watts. I think this pulls somewhere around a thousand watts as well. So this should hopefully put us at about 2000 watts. All right, actually it looks like it pulls a lot more than that. Right now we're pulling 2000, about 2220 watts, give or take. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run and we'll see uh, how long it holds it up at this 2200 watts. So it looks like it averaged and balanced out about 2250 it's been about two minutes now and it's still putting out that 2200 watts no problem at all so so far it is very impressive usually a lot of these uh, power stations okay well oh wait it didn't shut off the screen just shut off all right so like i said very impressive a lot of these power stations that we rated for something like a thousand watts and as soon as you push it a little bit beyond a thousand watts it just cuts off and can't take it but this one's actually managing uh, 2,250 watts, no problem at all. So it looks like their inverter might be uh, underrated actually. Definitely very impressive. It looks like my equipment's starting to heat up a little bit. So it's showing less power. But uh, 
definitely a solid win when it comes to the inverter. Last but not least, I also have their All Powers 400 watt portable solar panel, and this is a huge and heavy panel. Not only is it huge, but it's also very heavy at almost 48 pounds just for the panel. It does feel nice and sturdy, so in the end, I really don't mind the extra weight. Size aside, this is definitely my favorite panel to use as it really charges up my power stations extremely fast all in its own. On a sunny day, I was able to get 329 watts of charging from it. I didn't adjust the panel to the perfect angle, but if all things were ideal, I'm sure it would have had no problem putting out about 350 watts. Assuming the power station can handle 400 watts, this solar panel has become my go-to panel for charging all of my power stations. Overall, this is definitely a great power station and when paired with the All Powers 400 watt solar panel, it's easily one of my favorite combos I own. So if you happen to be looking for a good mid-sized power station that won't break the bank, then I highly recommend taking a look at the All Powers S2000. All right, well that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.